All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about that Kaplan-Meier curve. Uh, this is something that, that I've seen every now and then, and, you know, essentially what I did is I, I went to the USMLE.org uh, website and, you know, kind of pulled this, the, uh, the USMLE content outline, and if you go on page 27 where it has the biostatistics epidemiology, it literally tells you that the expectation is that you're going to... Uh, you're held accountable for understanding the Kaplan-Meier uh, curve. So in this video, we talk about a, the several topics that are associated with that. Um, I think we kind of hit, hit the big stuff. But I, I will ask for your help on this. If you come across any questions that are kind of on this Kaplan-Meier curve uh, content, if you wouldn't mind sending them to me, we can kind of use those as a base to kind of build from. And um, we can kind of take them and kind of twist them and kind of make them our own. We just want to make sure we can see questions from different perspectives. So if you find the video helpful, uh, don't forget to subscribe, you know, hit like, all that kind of stuff. It does, it does matter. Um, it's something that we, we kind of track to make sure people are actually finding value in kind of in us doing this. So, um, you know, keep studying hard and hope you like the video. All right, guys. So here we go. Question number one says... <clears throat> Based on the above Kaplan-Meier curve, what can we understand about the median survival time of group one versus group two during the study? <clears throat> well, you know, anytime again, anytime you see like a stair-stepping uh, graphs, I want you to think this Kaplan-Meier curve, okay? Now, there's a couple principal takeaways from this. So anytime you see this, you gotta think Kaplan-Meier curve. Now, the purpose of this thing, okay, is basically it's a way to estimate survival, okay? <clears throat> it's a way to estimate the survival, and that's the whole purpose of this. Um, the other thing that you need to understand is that when they made this Kaplan-Meier deal, they needed a way to incorporate uh, what they call, and this is a key word that you're going to see uh, in this stuff, is called censored data. And what that means is, is like, you know, when they, when they do a study and all of a sudden say, say somebody drops out or someone doesn't reach, doesn't have the, the occurrence or the event during that time frame, then they have to have somehow account for this censored data. Um, and that's what this Kaplan-Meier thing does. It, it puts, it, it kind of embeds it in there. And I'll show you that in just a, in just a second. So number one, you got to think stair step Kaplan-Meier curve, it estimates survival. Okay, that's the purpose of it. It's going to have this stuff called censored data um, in there. And this censored data, just so you know, that can affect, okay, that can affect uh, the curve, okay? You know, obvious, right? It maybe won't be as steep. It's, it's the way the curve looks. You know, we'll get that in just a, a second as well. Um, okay, so back to the question. Well, uh, again, based on the above Kaplan-Meier curve, what can we understand about the median survival time of group one versus group two? Or it could be, you know, a, a treatment group versus a placebo group. Now, they're going to they're gonna identify this, but long story short, you got group one, which is going to be this highlighted one right here on top, and group two, the people who were, who were in this one. Okay, and if you look on the y-axis, it's survival probability. So right here at 100, you know, they have it in percent, but they could just put it at, like, say, even decimals and stuff like that. But survivability at 100, that means this when the study began, everybody's alive, right? Of course. And then all of a sudden, group, group one went this way, group two went this way. And so 100% of the people were living here means 80%, 60, 40, and 20%. And if you're down here, that means, well, everybody's dead, all right? And then on the x-axis, it's time, okay? It's going to be time, and I just have it here in years. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 years. So this Kaplan-Meier curve is for this period of time you know, say it was a one group received a treatment, second group didn't, and they followed them over a period of 35 years. We're going to determine in this, between the two, the survival rate, and then we get, and this thing takes in consideration censored data. All right, so now here goes. Is it A, group one has a median survival score half of the patients, half of that of the patients treated in group two? So they're saying group one has a median survival, a median survival score half of this guy? Is it the median survival time of group one is approximately 15 years? Okay. 
Is it group one has overall reduced survival time compared to group two? Is it D, the median survival time for group two is eight years? Or is it E, the median survival time for group two is half that of group one? All right, so a lot of, a lot of stuff in here, but the long story short, it keeps asking about the median survival time. Remember what we did, you know, you remember there was median, mean, median mode. Uh, mean is just the average, right? The median, like when you're driving down the road, that's just the middle. And then of course, mode is most common. Okay, well, the only one we're dealing with here is median. So when it talks about the median survival, well, here's survival. So what's the median? What's the middle? It's gonna be, well, 50%, all right? It's the, that'd be the median. So if we were to draw that line all the way across, you know, it would cross group two right here and cross group one right there. So in group two, we would go down. And so the median survival of group two is gonna be, you know, let's just say it looks around eight years. In group one, it's gonna be the median survival is gonna be, um, let's just say roughly, it looks like 22, 23, somewhere in there, okay? So back to our crash. Group one has a median survival score half of the patients in group two. So so they're saying group one is half of group two? No, you know, it's not even close. Group one's median survival score is 22 years. So if you were a patient in the group one and you took that medication or you did whatever that one was, your median survival was gonna be 22 years. If you were in this guy and took that medication or whatnot, your, your median survival score is only eight years. That's why you need to understand this whole Kaplan Meyer, how to interpret it, because you know this is how they do some, uh, you know, when you read articles and such, practice-based uh, care or evidence-based care. I'm sorry. Uh, so group one. So it's not going to be this guy because that's opposite almost. Um, is it the median survival time of group one, which is highlighted, is approximately 15 years? No, 15 years would be right here, and so that's definitely not the median. Okay. Is it that group one has overall reduced survival time compared to group two? Well, wait a second. Group one has an increased median survival compared to, to group two. So it's not reduced, it would be actually increased. So it's not him. Is it the median survival time of group two is eight years? Oh yeah, here's group two is eight. Well, it kind of looks good, I like it. The median, or is it E? The median survival of time for group two is half of group one. Now. It's group two is reduced, but it wouldn't be half. It was half to be more closer to 10 or 11. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not correct. Not bad, but it's not correct. The best answer, the only answer is gonna be D. The median survival of group two is eight years. So that's just how to interpret this, this Meyer, Kaplan-Meyer curve, it looks like stair steps. You're gonna think Kaplan-Meyer, you're gonna think it estimates survival. So if you're in this group, you'd know your median survival was here. If you're in this group, your median survival was there. And then you have to talk about censored data here in just a second. And what that means is, you know, censored data is essentially if someone, you know, if someone either just dropped out, okay, dropped out of the study or um, they didn't have the event. You know, again, like if we were trying to uh, see if someone had a, you know, 10 people taking a drug had a myocardial infarction, all of a sudden one person in this group had the myocardial infarction. And so then, th then it goes down. So now there's 90% left. Um, and then another person, another person. But say somewhere in here, somebody dropped out. They had these things called these these little... Uh, sensor data uh, that would that you would have to incorporate and what that would do is it would make this stair step even longer and that's just a mathematical way so anytime you see a giant stair step uh, compared relatively speaking you know you might consider that that is where sensor data to occur but for you right now just know that sensor data is part of this part of this deal okay so the next one it says so same graph, it says, based on the above Kaplan-Meier curve, which group had a better 10-year 
10-year survival prognosis. Okay, again, group one, group two, they're asking at 10 years who had the better survival prognosis. Well, let's just say here's 10 years, and if we went all the way up, we can see that at 10 years, group two, this guy, yeah, let's just say for sim simplicity, it was at, you had a 40% survival. So if you took that drug or in that portion of the study at 10 years, you had a 40% chance of surviving. If you were in group one, you're looking at 80% roughly, okay? So of course you'd like, well, heck man, I wanna be in group one for this. So is it group one has a 10 year survival prognosis of 40%? Uh, nope, not group one. Group one was 80%, okay? So we know it's not him. Um, is it group two has a 10-year survival prognosis of 16? Um, you know, that's just, it doesn't even make sense, right? It's not 16%, and and 16, you know, that's, a, that's kind of saying like here, it has nothing to do with that. That's at 16 years, the survival of group two would have been like, say, 10%, but it, it's just a play on numbers. So it's not that guy. Is it C, group one has a 10-year survival prognosis of 80%. Um, group one, 10 years, 80% survival, looking good right there. Is it group two greater than group one? No. Now, because the survival is much less, much less in this guy than it is in, the group, in this group. Um, and you can see one, one way I, I've seen a guy talk about it is pretend if you were like on a, on a roller coaster or, or something like that and the steeper the curve, right, you're more scared. So the steeper the curve, you're thinking, okay, that's more dangerous, not, it, you know, for simplicity's sake. And so if it was a smaller curve, like, okay, this is an easier ride, um, not as dangerous. Um, that's one, one way of looking at it. Or you can just understand that this is time. You go up, you find out where, at what year. At five years, you know, the, the rate was 60% in, in group two. Okay, so the correct answer on that one, it's gonna be C, uh, group one has a 10 year survival prognosis, 80%, Kaplan Meyer, okay? And now the last one. It says, based on the above Kaplan Meyer curve, which of the following time spans most likely had a censored patient? Now, you know, you, to, un to really understand this, how the stair-stepping occurs, it's almost like this. You know, if you had N equals 10 in a, in a study, okay, T kind of totally separate right now. And so right here, you started with 100%. Everybody's in the study, everybody's alive. And say you start, and then here's time. So as you start moving time, all of a sudden somebody has an event. Say it's a myocardial infarction or something. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Someone has an event. So now, okay, one person out of 10 had the event. So how, many, how much is left, okay? 90%, so I gotta take 10% out, right? So this guy would go to 90. Um, and then there should be, you know, basically nine sections left. So now I'm left with how many people in the study? Nine, okay? And then I start moving with those nine people. And then all of a sudden something happens right there. So two out of nine. And now that's a, that's a percent. Now that's, uh, all right, I, don't, I forget how much, the, the, how much that is. But then it goes down whatever two divided by nine is. And then I should have nine sections, okay? And then all of a sudden, say I have two pe a couple people drop out, okay? Let's just say they flat out go away, they, they go away. They put in these things called censored data. So right here at the next event of someone who's still in the study, how many people were actually left? Let's think about that, right? How many people were left? One guy got out here because he had an event. Another person got out here, so now I'm left with eight, but then two people dropped out. So now I'm left with six people. So when this event happened, it happened to one person, there were six left, and then all of a sudden that's like um, 16%. So look, this drop here was 10%, okay? And then two out of nine somewhere here. But now this is a pretty bit, you know, instead of it being one out of eight, because two people dropped out, it's one out of six. And so that's a lot bigger than it should be, right? So that drop, is gonna be slightly, 
bigger per se, okay? It's gonna be slightly bigger. It's a, a little, so in general terms, just think of it like that. And that means that chances are somebody dropped out of the study right there. And then you go on and, and, and then, you know, either, either everybody dies or everybody has the event or, or the study ends, you know, it ends at, well, 10 years or something like that. And then there's still some people that never had the event, okay? That's the difference. That's the difference between something ending when it stair steps and ends like this, or the study that ends like, you know, that. That means everybody had the event. This means some people didn't have the event and it ends just like that, okay? Anyways, the moral of me telling this is, you see, it, once I had it one out of six and not one out of eight, there was a bigger drop right here. So. Based on the above Kaplan-Meier curve, which of the following time spans most likely had a censored patient? Okay. Is it A, right here, B, C, or D? And I'm, you're thinking, all right, well, uh, let's just go ahead and eliminate something. These look equal, right? Like it went down by roughly the same, even though we know it's gonna be a little bit different, there's no drastic changes on that. So I'm eliminating him. Uh, this, you know, e e just because the time is this long, do I know somebody left? Because the drop is not that much, right? It's a little bit more, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit more than these guys, but it's not overwhelming, uh, you know, it's not a giant drop. But when I look out at B or A, I see, okay, there's a, there, the drops are pretty, pretty significant. Like look at the difference here to here, okay? And then here to here, well, we don't know how many people were in the study, but it looks like it could just be a proportional one um, and nothing to compare it to. So the place where I think that perhaps there were some censored patients or patients who just dropped out of the study and then no longer were in the denominator like they should have, I would say it's going to be right to me, it's going to be right here, okay? Because let's just say from here to here, it, it might have been out of... Uh, you know, again, I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four, you know, five. It could have been, you know, uh, one person out of 15, but then all of a sudden we had two or three people drop out. So the next one's gonna be one out, instead of being one out of 14, it's gonna be say one out of 12 or one out of 10, and it's a bigger drop, okay? So that's kind of, like, it's just a, a a way of doing it. Does it work every time? I, you know, I don't know. It, it, this stuff's, you know, if we can just understand that a censored patient is one part of the Kaplan-Meier because they wanted to create a curve to where they could incorporate when people dropped out, can we still have it to where it, we can still do some type of um, chart to compare treatments of a treatment group, a placebo group, or two treatment groups to compare these even when p patients drop out or, or if they never have the event, okay? If they never have the event, that's called a, uh, like a right, uh, a right censored or a censored uh, patient, okay? So the correct answer I'm putting there is B as in boy. So, you know, where I'm getting this stuff, guys, is, you know, if you look, again, US Emily outline, you know, I'm just gonna try to go through here, you know, biostats, epidemiology, population health is kind of my thing. Uh, the survival analysis, Kaplan-Meier curve is right there. They're basically telling you, they're telling you, you better be familiar with this. And so if you really just do it that way, and um, you know, if, if, you, if you really just understand that it's a way to estimate survival, and you're comparing the two, know the median piece, and know how to interpret time going up on these, I think you'll be just fine. Okay? Hope you liked the video, guys.